Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, all day today. We will be talking about the Moscow concert venue that was subject to a terrorist action, leaving now we have the count at 130 dead. We had the count of 40 yesterday, so a massive amount of dead. It's a massive terrorist act uh, when it reaches those counts. And a lot of people are speculating, and I want to show you my ideological process in terms of fact-finding and in terms of what are the convincing theories as to who ordered this, what is motivating this. And I want to look at it from three different perspectives. One, the funding of this. Who funded this? Two, the format of this. How was it committed? And three, uh, the who's benefiting from it? And if you analyze on these three axes, you're gonna have you're gonna do a round of: Is it Russia that organized it against itself? Is it the U.S.? Is it Ukraine? Is it uh, is it just some terrorist cell action that's totally independent? To me, all of these possibilities are still open. But there is something very solid that I said yesterday that still remains, I think, the most solid fact about this whole affair, which is that this was ordered. This was some professional job ordered through contract. We now know that many have confessed. First, these terrorists have all been caught alive. This is the first time Islamist terrorists, I ever see them uh, attempt even to survive the shooting let alone flee and go to another country. So the first uh, idea that we have is this was run as a professional, more spy-like, professional uh, operation, more than a disorganized shooting and more than an ideological shooting. That doesn't mean they don't have ideologies. That doesn't mean they weren't recruited through networks of churches. Uh, you know sometimes how these networks of searches overlap with some intelligence agencies or true terrorists that just want to cause evil and they they get into the the church network or the imam network of muslim populations and they find uh individuals who could carry their their deeds but in any case we're the, the most solid fact about this affair is this was ordered by someone who had resources this was ordered by an institutional player of some kind doesn't have to be a multi-billionaire but it has been ordered by, in the form of contract, in the form of, uh, we're going to pay you, we're going to pay you the material, we're going to provide you with the material and the plan. So already you can, uh, you can remove the possibility that these were individual actors. They were recruited. Now they say they were recruited for half a million rubles which would be the equivalent of 5,000 US dollar before and 5,000 US dollar after, which is a ridiculously small sum for, for what is basically mostly a suicide mission, mission. But it's not impossible if you combine this, okay, with the exchange rate of the USD to rubles. So maybe they were perceiving this 10,000 USD as being bigger than we would perceive it. Maybe it would be worth their life. Combine this with the fact that they may have had mental disorders. They may have, had, they may have been weak on decision making. Combine this with the fact that in poor countries, a lot of people are, uh, they don't value their own life very much. So they're always willing for, 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 for an amount of money that looks like it would take them out of their condition. They, they sometimes are willing to do very dangerous stuff. And combine this with the fact that they, you know, being this kind of Caucasian uh, population, I look at their race and it's not the type of North African Muslim Arabs. Uh, those are Caucasians. They are, they genetically, these guys come from the areas around between the Middle East and Asia. They are really from the Caucasus, what we call the Caucasus, the actual term from which. Uh, from which Caucasian emerges. Uh, and so those are a very special kind of Muslim that could, have, that could have had some ideological motivations that would make it so that going after Russia, uh, 
would have been something interesting to them ideologically, even with little money, uh, because you have a history of part of these countries being conquered by Russia, or the Soviet, the Soviet Empire. And then you have a part of these countries that have been in modern time conquered by Russia, like Georgia, and, uh, and like the south of Ukraine. And then you have also the fear in many of these countries that the Russian Empire is extending over Muslim populations with Chechnya, for example, Chechnya. Um, and uh, they see themselves as potentially, eventually, the subject of conquest by, uh, by Russia. Um, so for all these reasons, and, uh, you know, we have often focused in the news coverage on the tension between NATO and the Western Front of Russia against Ukraine. But the reality is we are hearing more and more that all those countries, uh, Azerbaijan, Tajikistan, all of those countries below Russia are a front that might very well at some point be the, the main playground for U.S. intel agencies uh, to try to, to stimulate revolt against Russia. So it's not totally foreign, the idea that these guys living uh, in these countries, and, and I'm saying these countries, it's because I'm, I'm not totally set. The, you know, there are some people saying Tajikistan. Uh, there are some people that were mentioning Chechnya. And so I... I I really don't care about the details of this. We will figure out these details, and once they are figured out, we can have a whole story that goes specific to the which nation. But in any case, we're talking about kind of provinces of the Muslim provinces of the Russian Empire in some form. And so in those nations, there is a possibility of a sentiment against Russia. In the same way I know as a Quebecois, I had the sentiments against Canada. Uh, you know, I wasn't sympathetic to Canada at all when I was a sovereignist. Now I don't live in Quebec anymore. So, Qubit says Tuntelberg visited Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Armenia last week. Okay, I didn't know about this. That is an interesting fact to note. So, one of the individuals detained on suspicion of involvement. But so the first thing is. The strong observation is contractual. This was a contract probably on Telegram. Uh, did it involve crypto? Did it involve promises to the rest of the family in case you die? Perhaps. Um, the second thing is this wasn't operated as a suicide mission. Um, this was operated as a walk in, do your thing, film it with a body cam and then come out and, uh, and try to flee. And, and they fled quite a lot, in fact, heading long enough so that they were at the border of Ukraine, it is claimed by the Russian side. So a non-suicide mission, now, I don't know what's the culture of terrorism in these nations, because those are not like the Muslim Arabs that typically will, uh, the ISIS Muslim Arabs will typically uh, suicide commit suicide, being totally convinced by Allah, Allah Akbar. Now, one thing I note is we have the, uh, we have the video the, of the body cam, and these guys are also saying Allah Akbar. So they are saying Allah is great. Is that a subterfuge? Is that, uh, was it ordered to them to say this so that there would be a, there would be a culprit? I don't know. But this is this is why my question tonight is is Isis 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 is Isis Isis I mean is if a bunch of terrorists from Tajikistan attack Russia is this Isis if a bunch of terrorists in Iraq attack the US is it Isis the thing is it's such a loose uh, label and Isis itself may have interest at presenting themselves as the organizers of crimes they haven't committed. So you, you get to know nothing. ISIS is too much of a nebulous to me to, uh, to even talk of it as a matter of fact, because ISIS itself could have many cells. Some of these cells could be 
and the rest of the US and the rest of Ukraine and the rest of Israel and the rest of Russia all playing into this nebulous organization. Because the more your organization is nebulous, the more it's, you can take over it if you're an intelligence agent. Simeon says, yes, there are a lot of Chechen sleepers waiting to rise and fight when the time is right. Intelligence may be trying to tap into that. Absolutely. And people have noted a theory. I don't know that we, we can confirm this, but they have speculated that two of the people there may have been mental retards, basically. Two of the terrorists. And two of the terrorists were professionals. And basically the retards were walking around carrying their bags, and the two shooters were the two efficient uh, members of the team. So if that's the case, perhaps mental health and weakness uh, may have been part of the play here. Uh, recruitment through by identifying people who are weak, people who will not say no to you. Stephen Robinson says, Jeff, it's 2024. If they identify an, as ISIS, then they are ISIS. Stop being ISIS-phobic. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I guess uh, that this is what a Trudeau would say. Yeah, if they identify as ISIS, they are ISIS. But my question is, are they biologically ISIS? Okay. <laughs> are they born ISIS, or are or did they adopt this identity later in life? So that's one of the individuals uh, captured by the Russians. One of the individuals detained on suspicion of involvement in the terrorist attack at Crocus, further revealed that he had been offered half a million ruble, $5,400, to carry out acts of violence. So they were able to flee and head toward Ukraine. Um, uh, and this post, uh, this post says ISIS has claimed the responsibilities. No, 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 we aren't going after those who did this. We are coming for those who funded this. Every single one of you would be found. So that's a very pro-Russia nationalist uh, account. But I, I agree with the sentiment. What's, what matters here is not the low-level guys who performed this. It's who equipped them, who ordered this. Who was typing on this Telegram account? And one of my great fears is that Telegram may be so compromised by Western intelligence that I believe we may never have an answer. I believe that Western intelligence right now may be busy ordering Telegram not to provide information to the Russians. That is one of my greatest fears tonight, that we won't know the truth because the U.S. wouldn't want us to know the truth. And it's very possible that they have intimidation force that's strong enough against Telegram that if they say Telegram, don't release this info, Telegram won't. And th this is a problem because you have here a legitimate country, Russia, looking for investigation of a legitimate question. Uh, Stephen Robinson says, Victoria Nuland made a warning to Russia in the past few months. That is another very interesting thing that people are noting. There were, there were talks by Israeli politicians on TV. There were talks by U.S. politicians. And there were even internet posts uh, of U.S. agencies saying a terror act is coming potentially to some big venues in Russia. So avoid big uh, venues. And it came in the form of threats from certain U.S. officials. And I've seen all these videos. Israeli officials were saying, Russia will pay the price, you'll see soon. <laughs> these open-ended threats, uh, they appear... I, I wouldn't say that they are strong evidence that the U.S. and Israel are involved, but they are, they are definitely showing that it was within the line of their interest. Like... There are people who really, really hate Russia. I've been saying it for years here. Uh, there are people who really hate Russia, and they are in our governments, and they are in our media. That's why they did the whole Trump-Russia story. And, uh, and it's possible that they have such a threat that they could even take action against Russia that is absolutely irrational. 
because here we're going into the motivation analysis and Keith Woods, admiration to Keith Woods. You know, I think he's a great guy. He's going extremely, uh, he's going very careful with this. He's not taking much of a stance. He's mostly saying he has doubts at this point, but he won't get uh, fast into the US, Ukraine or Israel conspiracy theories. And credits to him because we're in an environment of information where intelligence agencies are seeding false information so that people like Keith and I fall for it. So the wisdom, the wise thing to do right now is wait for better evidence. He says, I don't find the conspiracies surrounding the Moscow terror attacks at all convincing. Difficult to see how the US, Ukraine or Israel benefits from it in any way. And it would be a disaster for any of them if proven to have a connection. Uh, I want to push back on this. There are good reasons to have doubts for conspiracies, and there are bad reasons. And that is an incorrect analysis, in my view, from Keith Woods. So Keith Woods, I agree that we should not say right now that uh, it's Israel, or it's Russia, or it's US, or it's Ukraine. But I, I believe it is a false analysis to say that there are no benefits on the side of US, Ukraine, or Israel for this attack to happen. Here's a couple of benefits. One, from a military standpoint, Zelensky has been invested in causing as much damage as he can toward Russia. He can't do much, but he's been doing terrorist actions. He's been doing blowing up bridges. He's been killing the daughter of a, uh, of a philosopher, of a Russian philosopher, our friend Alexander Dugin, lost his daughter because of a car bomb. So clearly, the rational analysis here, you may think that Ukraine doesn't have an interest in demoralizing Russia through, a, through some sort of a terrorist action, but that may not be the level of rationality that Zelensky is capable of. Zelensky being in this war scenario, seeing, hey, I'm losing support from the US. And that's because ultimately the front line is too stable. I don't really have the means to push that front line. Every time I tried, I lost countless soldiers. I'm now at the bottom of the drawers asking my recruiters to go kidnap males in my country to send to the front line uh, into the meat grinder. From this perspective, and from the perspective that they've been blowing up Nord Stream, they've been blowing up uh, Crimea Bridge, they've been killing the daughter of Alexander Dugin, they don't really care about, does it make sense? They are in an aggressive mode of damage to the enemy at all costs to foment a war that ultimately benefits financially a Ukrainian elite whoever it is that's below this flow of money coming from the US. So from that perspective, I disagree with Keith Woods that Ukraine doesn't benefit from this terror attack. Now the US, <clears throat> does the US benefit from this terror attack? Well, from a rational analysis, again, I don't think it's in the interest of the US people, the USA as a people, does not benefit from these attacks and does not benefit from an escalation with Russia. But the US elite, who may be warmongers, who may want to increase tension with Russia at all costs, who may have capitalistic benefits through the ownership of the military industrial complex, they, they sell weapons basically, or they sell services to the US Army in emergency mode. Uh, the companies of mercenaries and weaponry, the warmongers that, are, that want the war to, with uh, Ukraine to escalate, and the Democrats who believe that an unstable, that an unstable um, Russia is the best way to, have, um, to, to not have a Trump victory. This set of interest in the U.S., they would like. They would like. They like this terrorist action to have happened. So again, you have to analyze the countries for the pieces and the parts that they are. 
I do not believe that Keith Woods is correct that there is no U.S. and terrorists that benefit or that there is no Ukraine and terrorists. Now, Israel. Does Israel benefit from this? Well, there is an analysis according, uh, through which there is an analysis through which Israel benefits. Israel is potentially interested at securing its entire territory through a colonization of Gaza. They benefit really from any news even that can take the attention away from their genocide in Gaza. One. So, but that's an attention level uh, theory. It's not super strong. And I've been commenting against this kind of theory before. But you could think that they have an interest at the cameras being turned away from Gaza. Secondly, Israel perceives correctly that Russia is the force that is teaming up with, the, with a, a Muslim population that is forming an axis against their interest in the Middle East. For example, by giving uh, weaponry to Syria, by getting involved in the conflict in Syria. and Therefore, from the perspective of Israel, an unstable Russia that has to deal with domestic affairs and, most importantly, a conflict between the white Russian population and the, the Islamic, the, the, the Muslim Russian population, is totally playing in the hands of Israel. Not to mention that Israel may also have shared interests of the ones that I mentioned earlier, which is capitalist interest in simply the industry of war. For all of these reasons, I believe that Keith Woods here is stating the wrong reason to not believe the conspiracy theories. The correct reason to not believe the conspiracy theories is that we don't have enough evidence yet. That is the one that I accept. We don't have evidence, enough evidence yet, and therefore we should be careful. And there's lots of people who want us to be wrong about the news right now. Uh, in election season coming, there's lots of people who want to discredit new independent news broadcasters. So let's not give them the meat that they're looking for. But Keith Woods, be careful. Your analysis of motivations is false. J just by the standard of what I demonstrated here, which is I. I can think of massive sets of interest uh, that are at play here that, that could have motivated. And ultimately, what we're looking for, never forget Keith Woods, we're looking for a single person that was typing on a keyboard on a Telegram account. That person could be, could be a fundamental Islamist. That person could be an Israeli agent. That person could be a Ukrainian intelligence agent or that person could be a u.s intelligence agent and i don't see any of these hypotheses that are particularly non-credible uh so car city sends 10 bucks thank you so much for supporting the show he says jeff how do you change the video quality down from 1080p while live streaming i've noticed that lots of our people can't figure it out and are live streaming at 1080p Yours is at 480, raging dissidents as this problem, and many others, it limits the audience. Well, personally, I don't know. I have never had to touch this button. So perhaps I've been awarded uh, special rights by the, uh, by the Odyssey team that not all channels have. Personally, I have never given this option. I never checked this option. You guys are benefiting from... 480p, 720p as choices, um, <clears throat> and I don't know. Uh, what I would tell you is my streaming setups uh, is CBR, keyframe interval of 2, and bitrate of 2,500 with an encoder called NVIDIA and VEC H264. I believe that if other creators use these uh, settings in Streamlabs OBS, they should see the same option as me, unless I have special Odyssey treatment. But I've never been told that I had special Odyssey treatment. So uh, Nemo says, I like being given the choice between 480p, 720p, 1080p on Odyssey is prone to buffering. 
Yes, absolutely. Uh, full video of Moscow massacre, body cam footage. So here's here's a credible clue that came today that perhaps ISIS saying, hey, those were our boys, is not, you know, the hypothesis that this is not a conspiracy is within the space of the possible. Because ISIS has released body cam footage footage from this terrorist action. Um, we can watch a little bit, although I will not show the moment where they cut the throat of the guy. Because it's like... They go like... Uh, like I, <laughs> I wouldn't cut an onion like this. I wouldn't cut a piece of meat like this. But they, they're like... For these body cams to have been recovered and then to be published on the ISIS channels on the internet uh, with the ISIS logo, uh, either so they must have been dropping those body cams uh, somewhere at a point of pickup. Now, this opens the possibility that Russia could investigate who picked up who picked up uh, the body cam. How did the body cam get to the site? It doesn't necessarily mean that the conspiracy theories are false. Uh, ISIS in and of itself, which, which is why I, I titled the show is ISIS ISIS. ISIS, uh, you know, is a nebulous that's been referred to in the media, but they also have these official channels of communication. But who knows who controls these channels? It could totally be a psyop uh, of some intelligence agencies. Uh, we have more videos of the attack that we didn't have yesterday. That is people uh, first reacting to the attack and trying to find safe spots that many of them have eventually be killed as the shooter were approaching. Yesterday night was the great uh, Twitter space with Nick Fuentes on Keith Woods. It was great to hear Nick. And you can see the talent of Nick. You can see why Nick despite the effort for cancellation, has been still a very uh, popular streamer. Uh, you know, he masters this stuff. He understands what we're talking about. And it's so great to see his talent deployed on a one-to-one -one interview with Keith Woods. That was awesome. He was also commenting on Candace Owens. Uh, Daily Wire's firing of Candace Owens proves their hypocrisy on free speech. Absolutely great point. Great analysis by Nick. Daily Wire is supposed to be a conservative American outlet. And they say that they're against cancel culture. And they say they're in favor of a free marketplace of ideas. But obviously that's not true. Because what rule did Candace Owens break? What did she say that was so... We have a free marketplace. We could say whatever we want. What did she say that was so terrible? I'm, I'm looking for the quote. <clears throat> what words did she utter that were worthy of firing her? Is it because she said that Palestinians shouldn't be killed? Is it because she re <clears throat> responded to a rabbi who had been attacking her for two years? Because she debated a rabbi who called her a Jew-hating anti-Semite on her show? So, of course, the only reason she was canceled from Daily Wire is because she started making a fuss about America's support for Israel. She said on her show, her last show on Daily Wire, that everybody in politics knows that you can't criticize Israel in right-wing politics. And if you do, you get fired. What Absolutely. So never let these guys make the argument that they like the Constitution, free speech, uh, American values, uh, that they represent some kind of right-wing thought on, on the free speech question. They don't. They absolutely don't. They Candace here has been stellar in her class expressing those ideas it's like if you can't take that you can't ever take any form of critique of israel it's like you really have to be israel tattooed on the heart to be at the daily wire and it's so sad because it takes the the potential of the daily wire and it squeezes it down to oh yeah it's just a, a circle jerk the U.S. has publicly denied uh, the claim that Ukraine is not behind the Moscow attack. U.S. National Security Spokesperson John Kirby has officially stated 
Ukraine had no involvement in the recent Moscow attack. Uh, this means nothing. So I, I, it's, it doesn't mean that Ukraine did it, but I, I don't listen to this kind of statement. You know why? Because two partners can always play the game of, oh, I didn't know that they did it. Or, oh, he didn't know, I didn't tell him that I did it. So when the U.S. denies that someone else has done something, it's like, you don't know. You don't know. If you know who it is, tell us who it is. But you don't know right now. Unless you give me an alternative hypothesis, your denial is worth nothing. Same thing with the Nord Stream, you know. Oh, well, Ukraine, Poland didn't do it. Okay, well, the English did it for Ukraine. <laughs> Uh, so, and th there's the second reason why you never believe a statement like this. It's because saying Ukraine didn't do it may mean a lot of things. It may mean, well, Ukraine wasn't involved in the funding, but Ukraine still wanted it to happen. And so uh, this is worth nothing. Really, a denial in politics, unfortunately, in geopolitics is worth nothing. Today, we have seen a great effort uh, on the alternative, uh, alternative geopolitical scene on the internet, as well as the pro-Russian uh, people, to make the plausible case that Ukraine had some form of involvement in this. It may not have been a Ukraine-sponsored terrorist action, but on the side of Vladimir Putin, there is a belief that the, the terrorists were headed toward Ukraine. That was their getaway country. We also have people who have shown that Ukrainian fighters sometimes are caught wearing ISIS patches. So this is a theory out there. I don't know about the ISIS patches, what they mean. They may, they may have been disguised. That may be, they may be on a special mission and they want to deny that they were Ukrainian forces. But this, anyways, is from another picture from another conflict. But just to, just to say, it's possible that you have people who are disguised in acts of war or acts of terrorism. And sometimes the disguise is superficial, like a patch. Sometimes the disguise can be up to, hey, I'm going to pay you that much more if you can scream Allah Akbar. Uh, as you perform your action. So always be careful of everything you interpret. People have noted that the detainee uh, here, this one, doesn't speak Russian. So that's a, that's a very interesting fact. Uh, these people seem to come from outside Russian culture. Um, they probably didn't have individual personal interest in in Russia as a country. Perhaps they had some hate against Russia as a colonizing power, but that's, that's the best because they didn't even speak enough Russian to fully interact with their questioner. Uh, another very important uh, happening today is that there has been a series of fake news that has fooled a lot of major accounts, including that of Mario Nafal. Uh, the claim was that one of the People, I believe this one uh, captured were um, were Ukrainian, and they had pictures of a passport, and they were claiming they are Ukrainian, and this was giving a lot of gas to the whole theory of well, Ukraine must have some sort of involvement. It turned out to be fake news, as far as we know up to right now. Uh, Mario Nafal has withdrawn the tweet. But there is a strong pressure, as I described yesterday, if I was Vladimir Putin, I want to find where is Ukraine in this act? Were they the receiving country? Were they the getaway country? Were there people in the Ukrainian army ready to receive those terrorists as they were crossing the border? This is all very important. But when you have something so important, you have a big drive to, uh, to find truths that aren't true. You have a lot of trolls out there wanting to publish fake information. So what we do know is from the perspective of Putin, the Tajikistan, they are Tajikistani terrorists, uh, and they were in contact with Ukraine to the extent that they would have had a window 
a window of time and place to move into Ukraine and seek protection there. Uh, one of the one of the aspects that is that I still don't fully understand is that we saw yesterday there was a fire on the roof, and the the building is uh, totally collapsed in terms of the roof. How did that happen? This is what I'm wondering. Uh, were these terrorists coming in with equipment to start a fire? Um, I I don't know. I have no clue. Or was it the response? What led from a bunch of four guys with Kalachnikovs or whatever these weapons were uh, shooting onto people? Now we have a full building blown up. How does that happen? Stephen Robinson says drone strike. Uh, I'm going to wait to pronounce myself on this because it does seem that the fall of the roof was due to a prolonged fire. But what, what started this fire? Was it, was it done by the terrorists? Was it done as an accident in response to the terrorists? I don't know. One other person that is being captured in this is uh, Mohammad Sobir Fazov. He says that he received documents to stay in the, Russian Feder in the Russian Federation right at the airport from unknown people. So this gives us another clue that this is a wide conspiracy in terms of the execution. These guys were given all of the tools they needed. They were given a trajectory, given instructions. They were given weapons inside Russia. They were given uh, papers to make it, make it to the attack, and they were even given uh, a runaway country. So this is very organized. There are people who collected those body cams. There are people in Russia right now who are responsible for transferring all the material to this guy uh, and the papers. So extremely well-organized, well-coordinated action. Firestarter says it's a theater. Most of the building is hollow, so it's easy to collapse the roof. Yeah, maybe that's that's all the explanation we need. But you know, things are hard to catch fire in this in a big, big building like this. So, what is it that caught fire? Even uh, what even is fire? <laughs> what even is? Uh, a carburant in this building. Nemo says, who has access to false papers like that? Again, those are very good questions. Alex Jones is trying to push a narrative. He says, but who control ISIS? Who fought on the side of the West in the Syrian war against Russia? If you said ISIS, you are correct. ISIS equals CIA. Uh, and this is in response to Tommy Robinson, who was saying, as ISIS massacres Christians in Moscow during Ramadan, remember, it's just a phobia and the far right are the problem. So of course, you have Tommy Robinson pushing, trying to use the circumstance to push an anti-Muslim, uh, an anti-Muslim uh, pro-Israel perspective. That is one level of one layer of deception. But then the Alex Jones counter. Uh, is it true that ISIS is CIA in the war in Syria against Russia? Uh, there is a community note that is proposed. First, they say there has never been a Syrian war against Russia. Well, th there's been a war on the ground between forces that were proxies of Russia and for forces that were proxies of the U.S. And then number two, they say the U.S.-led CJTF OIR works with SDF forces within Syria who have actively fought against ISIS. Well, again, ISIS, extremely, extremely blurry concept. I don't even know. <clears throat> I don't even know, but certainly it, it's not unprecedented that there are ISIS commanders who happen to be also, oops, Israeli Mossad agents. <laughs> Ephraim Benjamin, 
على اسمك الحقيقي واسمك الحركي في ليبيا He has a fake name in Libya, Mohamed Yassir Abu Ala. Mohamed Yassir Abu Ala. Mohamed Yassir Abu Ala. And his, his religion is Jewish, he is Israeli, and sometimes uh, you have Israeli agents of Mossad that are penetrating so deep into the terrorist network that they have their own name, they look like an Arab, they act like an Arab. And so it's not unprecedented. This was in another case. This was in Libya. But you can have this. It can happen. Uh, Quebec insists, says, Papa JF, why would ISIS travel into Russia to attack what is at best a secondary target? What is the value of this action? Well, you know, what is the value? What is the value of striking 9-11? What is the value of striking the U.S.? for a bunch of Muslims living in mountains in the Middle East. Like, you can, you can say, well, that's, there's no rational. And indeed, there are no rational. And yet, what I'm saying today is there are people who act irrationally anyways. But as far as the analysis of rational goes, in my view, um, there is justified rational for U.S., Ukraine, Israel and ISIS. All of these, all of these theories are possible. Uh, from the perspective of the motivation of an ISIS ideologue, it, it could simply be that you, you think that Russia is an empire that's taking over Muslim nations that where Sharia law or, or Islam should rule as the unique ruler. And you know that if your country is subsumed by the Russian empire, you know that uh, you know, Islam will not rule as the unique law. You will be subsumed to a federal entity. <clears throat> so that would be the thing. It would be a kind of sovereignist um, drive of the Muslim population against the white Russians and the, the political Russia. Rodil Asid says, and Russian false flag too. We can't rule that out. But they are all not equal likelihood. Okay, yes, I could include the Russia false flag as a possibility in this list. Uh, I, find, I find it very unlikely. This doesn't look like... Uh, it just doesn't look like a Russian false flag because I don't think that Vladimir Putin even needs a, a causes, a... I'm not going to do the, the causes belly uh, etymological debate again, but... Uh, he doesn't need a cause. I think he could strike Ukraine right now without this event having happened. Uh, Silver Spider says, I actually used to think Tommy Robinson was on our side, especially after he was arrested. Makes me think maybe even Tate is just a plant too. Being arrested means nothing. Oh yeah, it means nothing. Uh... ISIS also released photos of the four attackers, but blurred their faces. And people have been speculating that this doesn't look like a genuine picture. Uh, people are arguing, well, maybe they blurred the faces because those are not the true terrorists that committed the action. People have been noting that they are using their left hand to do the ISIS sign, uh, whereas very often it's the right hand. Uh, I don't know the genuineness of this picture. I, I'm not going to take a stance on it, but it is said that ISIS, uh, in claiming the attack, have also released uh, this picture. This guy has a very good tweet on what is known. The shooters, originally from Tajikistan, fell under religious indoctrination online related to the Islamic State of the Khorasan province. The indoctrination groups were supervised by a Tajikistani citizen called Salman Kurosoni. He was the one who made the initial recruitment. Kurosoni is said to be an intermediate link between the Islamic State of the Khorasan province and the CIA. Islamic State organizers do not prom promise financial rewards, but for some reason one was approved with the help of Khorasani Tasks and instructions were prepared by an intermediary in Turkey, presumably a career employee of a foreign intelligence agency, and sent to Salman Kurosoni, Ukraine, where the shooters were heading to. 
was not the last link of the withdrawal plan. Another unidentified foreign intelligence agent located in Ukraine was supposed to transport them directly to Turkey and then to Afghanistan. That's where the intermediary ideological organizer Salman Kurozoni is located. Uh, I, I don't, I, I cannot verify each of these facts, but they lay out a, a very real possibility that within those uh, extremist recruitment agencies, you have intelligence agencies coming in, pouring in their interest to monitor what's happening and sometimes to cause what's happening. And so even if you were to tell me, yeah, it's ISIS and look, they were training in an ISIS local and the ISIS guy that knew them took pictures with them. Even then, uh, there would still be a very important intelligence level question. Why is this money flow necessary if we're talking about ideological combatants? <coughs> and who controlled that money flow and who made that happen? Uh, so finally, uh, the, I will not show the image, but uh, one of the attackers was tortured by the Russians who captured him. And uh, we can see them on a video, cut his hair and, and feed it to him so that the guy ended up uh, chewing on his own ear. Um, that's, you know, um, well, here, here's the, uh, the video of the guy recovering in the hospital. If you get captured, don't get captured by Russians. <laughs> they have the most barbaric practices. They won't even kill you. They, <coughs> they, will, uh, they will do all sorts of cruel things with your eyes, your ears. Absolutely scary. Uh, that was the fake news item that ended up being withdrawn by Mario Nafal. Uh, you see, it looks very real. Like, oh, this guy had a Ukrainian passport, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> uh, but no, it wasn't real. So be very careful about what's out there. Uh, all in all, my conclusion is contract, coordination, a lot of actors, a lot of people participated to making this happen. A lot of professionals who knew what they were doing and who ha are, are power powerful enough to get papers, weapons in a country, and to recruit people through extremist networks. Uh, this is the image of what we have at this point concerning the Moscow attacks.